Hello and welcome back. I hope you can hear me. It's a bit breezy up here. No, your eyes aren't deceiving you. I haven't come to a giant golf range and no, I haven't woken up in the middle of a uh, sci-fi movie. <laughs> I'm at the top of the third highest peak in Shropshire. So I am on top of Titterstone Clee Hill. And uh, as I said, it's the third highest peak in Shropshire with only Brown Clee, which is the highest, over to my left, and Stiper Stones, which is the second highest, somewhere that direction. So let's go and see what the big balls are all about. Come on, let's go. By the way, bloody cold up here. So this big golf ball dome that's behind me isn't an alien communication system. It's actually part of the National Air Traffic Services. So it monitors a hundred mile radius of the sky and tracks aircraft, airplane traffic. So if you've got an app on your phone and you want to know what huge jet just went over you, and you're within a hundred mile radius of here, which is quite a big area, it'll be this that's telling you what that was. So it's one of 30 overlapping systems in the whole of the UK. So the two masts that are over there as well, there's actually a, a, a building complex over there. So that's where people will be working and gathering the information of the aircraft that's coming from this, this dome here. During the Second World War in September 1941, a radar station was set up on Titterstone Clee under cover of being a Royal Air Force station under the name of RAF Clee Hill, which housed between 40 to 50 personnel. Initially, the radar and wireless crew lived in huts within the station, which made for cold living conditions in winter, but it ceased to be residential in September 1956, when crew were allowed to board in Ludlow. The station, latterly commanded by a flight lieutenant, disbanded and closed in September 1957. However, it was reactivated in 1964 under the oversight of the Civil Aviation Authority. So this tower here with the smaller golf ball on top is uh, a Met Office precipitation tower so uh, it measures rainfall in the area and then sends that information back to the Met Office so they can do their uh, weather forecasting at the moment it's not raining but there are some big clouds in the sky Such a strange landscape. It's almost like being on another planet. It's beautiful up here though. Even if it is flipping cold. I've got my gloves. <laughs> but I've got the place to myself. Although partly destroyed by quarrying, Titterstone Clee's Iron Age hill fort or encampment, enclosed by a huge boundary earthwork, has fared better than those on Brown Clee. It is of note that the walls of the fort are made up of stone blocks instead of earth banks.
The hill rises above the surrounding countryside by virtue of its distinctive geology. The igneous rocks capping both Titterstone Clee and Brown Clee Hill being more resistant to erosion than the neighbouring sedimentary rocks. Titterstone Clee Hill, sometimes referred to as Titterstone Clee or Clee Hill, rises at the summit to 533 metres above sea level. Titterstone Clee is the third highest hill in Shropshire. It's passed only by the nearby Brown Clee Hill at 540 metres and Stipe Stones at 536 metres above sea level. So this is the remains of a Bronze Age burial cairn it's dating back of 4,000 years and this tells us that Titterstone Clee Hill was an ancient ceremonial site. Clee Hill is one of only a few hills and mountains noted on the Hereford Map of Monday 13th century map of the world displayed at Hereford Cathedral. Most of the summit of the hill is affected by man-made activity, the result of hill fort construction during the Bronze and Iron Ages, and more recently by years of mining for coal and quarrying for dolerite, known locally as dewstone, for use in road building. These are the remains of um, quarry buildings and they quarried a stone called dew stone. The word dew comes from the Welsh word dew which means black and they actually use dew stone as a base for when they are building roads and it's still used today. Now these buildings are abandoned here but they do still quarry on the side of Titterstone Clee Hill.
Now the buildings here are actually of architectural importance because they are early examples of reinforced concrete structures. Pretty amazing, isn't it? On a day like today, imagine how brutal it must have been working up here in the quarries. Even worse when it's Full on winter. Some of the workers used to live up here and they used to travel from Bridge North and Ludlow. But it just got too hard for them to travel. So in the end, the quarry owners built two purpose-built villages on the slopes. One was called Dewstone, obviously named after what they were mining for. The other village was called Bedlam. Now the bed, word Bedlam derives from Bethlehem or Mary of Bethlehem which was the original um, psychiatric hospital in London. Now the word Bethlehem became shortened to Bethlehem and then Bedlam and because it was a psychiatric hospital Bedlam became associated with crazy things going on, mad things going on. So you say, oh, it's like Bedlam in here. Now, there is a bit of debate as to why the village was called Bedlam. Some say it was because there was a, a psychiatric institution in the area somewhere, or it may be because of Bedlam, all the craziness, all the work going on up here. No one really knows, and you can't really find anything about it on the internet. I did find in a book the rumour of that there was a psychiatric institution in the area, but can't really be proved. And a while back, the uh, residents of the village of Bedlam wanted the village name changed to Titterstone Village, but it's still called Bedlam.
Before the Second World War, the area would be described as industrial because of the presence of wide-scale quarrying and associated activity. Men came from places such as Bridge North and Redlow to work in the quarries. Crumbling remains of quarry buildings now litter the hill, reminders of bygone industry that once employed more than 2,000 people here. Early in the 20th century, a further large quarry, the Magpie Quarry, opened on the eastern side of Clee Hill and an aerial ropeway was built to carry stone off the hill eastwards to the railway at Detton Ford. The footings for the tall pylons which supported the wires still remain near the summit, parallel to the modern day track to the radar domes. Over the years, large numbers of quarries were opened up on Tidstone Clee to exploit the dolerite. All but one on Clee Hill are now abandoned. The largest quarries have sheer drops of up to around 100 feet. Nearby, on the flanks of Clee Hill, a standard gauge railway incline provided means of exporting quarried stone from above Clee Hill village. This railway infrastructure remained intact until abandoned in the early 1960s. In the past, the quarries have also been worked on a much smaller scale for coal, fire clay and limestone. So we've got a little structure here, just by the side of the road. So this goes, uh, this road goes on up to the summit. So I wonder if this was like a uh, a checkpoint or something. It's got two separate rooms in it. There's one on the other side of the road as well. So this could have been something to do with the quarry, could have been a quarry master's house or a toll house or a way bridge house or something like that. Hope you enjoyed that uh, journey around Titterstone Clee. What an amazing place it is. Got to admit, I do love the Clee Hills. You can keep your reeking and the Stiper Stones. Brown Clee and Titterstone Clee. Yeah, I love them.
amazing places. The Titterstone Clee is so different to Brown Clee. I'll put a link to my uh, Brown Clee walk. Um, yeah, completely different landscapes. It's quite barren up here. But there's uh, the skylarks and apparently there's peregrine falcons around as well. But yeah, com two complete contrasts, but I, I love them. It's amazing up here. I'm so glad I come. Right, I'm going to head back to the car. I'm going to drive down to the bottom to find a viewpoint, hopefully get a time lapse, and I will show you what used to be the highest pub in Shropshire. I just want to uh, stop here and let you know about a fantastic offer that Tent Meals have sent me. So Tent Meals specialise in expedition food and they do main meals, breakfasts and snacks. And they have kindly sent me a 40% discount code to share with you guys. So if you head over to tentmeals.co.uk and at the checkout if you enter Firenze 40 you will get a 40% discount off your order. There's no minimum order and it's a free delivery on all orders over £20. So check them out and um, let me know what you think of the meals. So that's 40% using the code Firenze40. Just stopped here in this uh, car park here in the village of Clee Hill. It's got a lovely viewpoint here, so I've just had a, a nice coffee and done a time lapse. So hopefully that's come out. I'll put that on if it has. So the building just in front of me is the former highest pub in Shropshire and it was called the Kremlin. Now people say the reason it was called the Kremlin is because it was so high it could only receive Russian radio stations. But uh, sadly it's, uh, it's been closed now for about 12 years. Uh... <laughs>